regarding automobiles, yeah. Welcome back to episode five. Last time we left off, I had just drilled out that pinch bolt and thought it was gonna be smooth sailing all the way to, uh, to removing and replacing those upper strut mounts. Well, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So because of the, how long it took to do everything and recording and, and filming, it takes, everything takes a lot longer when you're doing that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you clips mixed in with voiceover and me actually doing the work and I'll show you what happened after I finished drilling out the pinch bolt. So immediately I noticed that both ball joints, outer ball joints were shot. You'll see here the, uh, the new one versus the old one. They were both like that. And so I had to learn how to move those out or get those out, learn the big hammer technique to remove the ball joint rather than trying to pry it out. Was able to go get a cheap ball joint remover tool and in the end, I got them both replaced and moved to the next step. So I moved to start removing or loosening all the things I needed to loosen to get that strut out on the driver's side, sway bar links uh, and the control arms. So I got the sway bar disconnected, but then I realized that I still couldn't move the strut. And when I looked closer, and I removed some of the dirt, I realized that the same person that had sheared off that pinch bolt, the same person that had misdrilled it, had decided that the best way to fix that problem or to keep the car safe was to weld the strut directly into the steering knuckle. The only solution to this was to remove the entire steering knuckle from the car along with the strut because they were welded together. And to do that, I had to remove the um, the nut from the end of the axle which is where I ran into my next problem. This is a picture of what the of the spindle nut looks like normally and you can see it's got a nice sort of lip at the top there and to keep it on you would normally bend that in to a little notch on the axle and that way it can't rotate while you're driving. What they had done was this. They had mangled it and bent it down here but also here so that you couldn't just bend it back up with like a, a punch or something to bring it out. So the only way to get it out, of course, was to was to grind off the little lip so that it would come loose. Here's the old versus the new bolt. You can see how that turned out. Once I got that done, I removed the whole strut along with the upper strut mount, obviously, and the steering knuckle, set it up on a table outside. And originally I was going to use a full-size grinder to cut it out, but it was obvious that it was going to be too big, so I decided to use the Dremel instead. The person that welded this in did a pretty good job at doing something bad, I guess, by uh, welding it in multiple places, which means here's me grinding it out of multiple choice uh, multiple places and for good measure here's me grinding closer to dusk because obviously it looks way cooler when it's darker After a little bit of grinding, I was able to actually get the strut out of the steering knuckle, just knocked it out with a piece of wood from the bottom, and then I cleaned up the, the uh, steering knuckle a bit, took some rust off of it, and so I know what you're thinking now. Finally now, I am going to see him replace those upper strut mounts. Not yet. One of the goals with this car is obviously it's not going to drive 
during the winter anymore or it's not, I'm not planning to drive it during the winter at all. So I would like to, as I work on it, take as much rust off or fix as much rust as I possibly can on it. And when I looked up in the, where the, the strut mount actually touches the, the frame of the car, it was, there was rust forming there. Now, not a lot of rust, just sort of surface rust. So what I decided to do is before I put the strut back in, grab my handy wheel here. It was kind of awkward to get the drill up in there, but it's okay. I managed to strip it all off down to the bare metal so it looked like this. And then I just gave it a quick blast of primer, let it dry, and then I had some old uh, silver trim clad lying around, and then I sprayed it with that. And once it dried, it looked like this. Now, finally, at long last, me replacing the upper strut mounts. First thing you have to do is put the spring compressors on. The uh, mini springs are actually are not under that much compression compared to other cars. Uh, I've seen people online take do this without using the actual spring compressors, so I'm not going to do that. I put them on. Uh, next thing was just to undo the bolt at the top and remove the actual upper strut mount. Now, if you look here, I think it's harder to see in the video here, but here's the old one versus the new one. Uh, the old one's obviously compressed a bit more, and when it was on the car, it was a lot more obvious that it was sticking way up in the opposite direction. So just screw the new one back in place and reinstall everything back into the car. And there you go. That is how you do a one hour job over a month and a half. Uh, let's do Phil's tips for changing your upper strut mounts. Uh, assuming that you don't run into all the same problems I do, uh, if you're just doing a normal job, uh, I'd say the only thing that really uh, was challenging, all the videos online, they just pull the thing out, they replace the, the upper strut mount and they put it back in. Some of them don't loosen all the, like the, the ball joints and lower control arms. I had to do that to get the strut back in. I could not get that strut back in if I didn't loosen all that. There was just no way. I was hitting with hammers. I was sort of pushing it with a piece of wood and like trying to knock it back in. It just didn't go. So that's really the only tip. Um, all the other stuff wasn't really tips that you would be use or that you would use because all the crazy stuff that I ran into probably is not going to happen to you. Uh, so what's up next? That is done. First job. First job done. I guess. Uh, what's up next? Well, while I was doing that, I noticed that at least one of the CV boots, CV axle boots was leaking. I think you can probably get through like one summer, but I looked it up for about 200 bucks. I can get both of them. Probably going to do that. Uh, what else do I need to do? I still need to do the, uh, rust on the back and on the, on the tail light and on the hit on the hatch. I have noticed that it looks like, it looks like he drove through the person who owned it, drove through gravel or something. There's lots of little paint chips. Not sure what I'm going to do about that. Still need to replace the power steering hose uh, and the power steering O-ring. But remember that noise that I heard originally when I got the car, this. That wasn't the power steering. That was the upper strut mounts. That is fixed. So thankfully that is fixed. Don't hear that anymore. Uh, so yeah, the power steering hose, power steering gasket. And those are the major things. I still want to do like all the fluid flushes. So new, uh, new transmission fluid new coolant, new oil, uh, and that'll bring it back to stock. After that, then I want to move on to the upgrades. I've already bought a few pieces, but I'll leave that to the future videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.